Good evening and welcome to our midweek devotional. I'd like to begin with a story. Little Johnny was playing with his buddy on the school playground. And they began to argue. And the argue intensified and little Johnny, he swung and he punched his friend. Well, the next thing you know, Mrs. Smith walks across the playground, breaks up the fight and says, okay, you guys, what's going on? Little Johnny fesses up. He says, Miss Smith, I can, I can explain everything. It all happened when he hit me back. It all happened when he hit me back. Question, have you ever recognized sin in your life yet failed to confess it? Maybe you sense the Lord revealing to you some sin in your life, but yet you failed to confess it. Maybe you have a trusted friend who can speak into your life sensitively and lovingly and expose walk the walk in your life that's incongruent with the way the Lord would have you to walk, yet you still failed to confess it. That is the story of Psalm 32, which will be the focus of our attention this evening. This is a psalm that was written by David, and it gives us a window into his soul, but it gives us a window into the Christian life. He begins by explaining to us the blessing of having a relationship with God. And then he spends the rest of the psalm talking about how unconfessed sin in his life caused a lot of pain. Let's begin with verse 1 and 2. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. You see, the greatest blessing you and I could ever own is that our sins have been forgiven. Our, our tra transgressions are forgiven. The Lord does not count our sin against us. Because of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have a perfect relationship with God positionally. Our sins are forgiven. God will never count them against us. But David adds a phrase to the end of verse two. It says, blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit, see, there is no deceit. Here's the window we get into the life of David. You see, we can be children of God in a, in a relationship with him, at peace with him, based on what Christ did for us at the cross, yet all still not be well with us in the Lord because of unconfessed sin. David tells us why here. He says, because he deceived himself. David deceived himself about the unconfessed sin. You see, he said, in whose spirit there is no deceit. We know this by verse three and four. He says, for when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. You see, because of his unconfessed sin, because he deceived himself, he began to suffer. Physically, he groaned. Maybe his bones ached, maybe his body ached. But more importantly, he shows us here that he suffered spiritually. Spiritually, he says, this is, this is metaphorically here. He says, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. There was no fresh air in his spiritual life, no refreshment at all in his inner being based on he, his relationship with the Lord because he failed to confess his sin. Recently, I began playing tennis and um, in an unwise fashion, uh, being a rookie, uh, I agreed to play my neighbor who had been playing uh, basically since he could walk. In an, uh, in an unwise fashion, again, we decided to play at one o'clock in the afternoon. So basically, I chased balls for about an hour. Man, towards the end of that hour, I knew what it meant to lose my strength as by the heat of summer. You, you couldn't start a fire in Baton Rouge because every oxygen molecule, molecule got sucked into my lungs and I had no strength and I was just sitting there. I thought I was going to pass out. I could not get enough air to even maintain my strength. I just had to sit down or, or I was going to pass out. Spiritually, this is what David is saying here. When we have unconfessed sin in our life, there's no refreshment. There's no life. But, but like 1 John 1 says, 
If we will confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what he does. Look in verse five. David says, I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave him. You see, God forgave him and he experienced the joy and the refreshment in his life that comes when our relationship with the Lord is healthy. You see, when it's healthy, God says, his eye will be upon us. That's what it says there in verse eight. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. See, that just means God, God that's just a, the psalmist way of saying God's favor was back upon him. He would hear the counsel of the Lord. He would sense the Lord's leading in his life and God's favor would be upon him. You see, proximity is restored. Closeness is restored. Intimacy and affection is restored between us and God when we finally confess the sin in our life that he's telling us to. But when we do, well, when we do, we get to experience verse 11, which is how David concludes this psalm. He says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, you upright in heart. Could it be that in this pandemic where God has slowed the pace of life down to, to a, a bearable speed, could it be that he's done that so that we could pursue him intently and listen to him and obey him faithfully? This may be the story of your life right now. It may not be. But I know God wants us to use this time to pursue him Little Johnny said, it all started when he hit me back. You see, little Johnny was in denial. Are you? Is there unconfessed sin in your life that you need to repent of? Oh, do. Pursue the Lord. Find refreshment. Don't go about living as though your strength was zapped as by the heat of summer. Let's experience verse 11. Let's be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O oh righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. But remember, we don't get verse 11 without verse five. I will acknowledge my sin to you. And when I do, you will forgive me. Let's draw close to the Lord. Let's intently pursue him and faithfully obey him so that we can fully worship him. Church, I hope you have a great rest of the week. God bless.